Good morning everybody and welcome to our uh, service of morning prayer this morning here in um, St John's. I was trying to get a picture so you could see the beautiful views behind but I don't think you can particularly but you can look at the lovely flowers and um, hopefully the sound will be okay and not uh, not too noisy from the road. Um, but a beautiful, beautiful morning. We've had such lovely weather this week haven't we? Um, hope uh, we're on holiday next week as uh, many of you know so I'm hoping that it will be nice next week too. Um, so let's get on to our morning prayer um, for today Thursday the 17th of September the year is whizzing by uh, and if you want to read the readings for yourself at home today if you were wanting to read the psalm. The psalm set for today is Psalm 14. Um, it's a short psalm so you can read 15 as well. In fact they're also giving us 16. So 14, 15 and 16 psalms for today. Our Old Testament reading comes from 1 Kings chapter 4 verses 29 to into chapter 5 verse 12. So 1 Kings 4:29 to 5.12. And the New Testament reading, which I shall be reading in a moment, is from the book of Acts still, carrying on through the book of Acts, and we're now on chapter 15, and our verses will be 1 to 21. So those are our readings for this morning. Um, you have to excuse me if I put my sunglasses on, because the, the sun has come out, and it is a beautiful, beautiful morning. So let's pray. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new and beautiful day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. So the Thursday canticle before our first reading. I have given you as a light to the nations, and I have called you in righteousness. Thus says God who created the heavens, who fashioned the earth and all who dwell in it, who gives breath to the people upon it, and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord and I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the captives from the dungeon, from the prison, all those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. I have given you as a light to the nations, and I have called you in righteousness. And so our reading now from the book of Acts, chapter 15, verses 1 to 21. Then certain individuals came down from Judea and were teaching the brothers. Unless you are circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. And after Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and debate with them, Paul and Barnabas and some of the others were appointed to go up to Jerusalem to discuss this question with the apostles and the elders. So they were sent on their way by the church, and as they passed both Phoenicia and Samaria, they reported the conversation of the Gentiles and brought great joy to the believers. When they came to Jerusalem, they were welcomed by the church and the apostles and the elders, and they reported all that God had done with them. But some believers, sorry, but some, sorry, I've lost that. <laughs> when they came to Jerusalem, they were welcomed by the church. But some believers who belonged to the sect of Pharisees stood up and said, it is necessary for them to be circumcised and ordered to keep the law of Moses. 
Well, the apostles and the elders met together to consider this matter, after there had been much debate. Peter stood up and said to them, My brothers, you know that in the early days God made a choice among you, that I should be the one whom to go to the Gentiles, and through whom the Gentiles would hear the message of the good news and become believers. And God, who knows the human heart, testified to them by giving them the Holy Spirit, just as he did to us. And in cleansing their hearts by faith, he has made no distinguish, distinguish, distinction between them and us. Now, therefore, why are you putting God to the test by placing on the neck of the disciples a yoke that neither our ancestors nor we have been able to bear? On the contrary, we believe that we will be saved through the grace of the Lord Jesus, just as they will. The whole assembly kept silence and listened to Barnabas and Paul as they told of the signs and wonders God had done through them among the Gentiles. After they finished speaking, James replied, My brothers, listen to me. Simeon has related how God first looked favourably on the Gentiles to take them from among them the people of his name. This agrees with the words of the prophets as it is written. After this I will return and I will rebuild the dwelling of David which has fallen. From its ruins I will rebuild it and I will set it up so that all other peoples may seek the Lord, even the all Gentiles over whom my name has been called. Thus says the Lord who has been making these things known from long ago. Therefore, I have reached a decision that we should not trouble those Gentiles who are turning to God, but we should write to them to abstain only from things polluted by idols and from fornication and from whatever has been strangled and, and from blood. For in every city for generations past, Moses had those who proclaim him, for he has been read aloud every Sabbath in the synagogue. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, I don't know about you, but it's it's a, a difficult, um, complicated reading, I think, that one. Well, actually, I suppose on level, it's, it's quite easy that the Gentiles, those who were not born Jews, um, who had now become Christians, were being told by some that they should be circumcised in the way that Jews all are, to show that they are uh, of God's people. Um, I'm not sure who you show it to, but I will get into that. Um, but understandably, um, a lot of the Gentiles are saying, well, why? Why? What's the purpose of this? We are not Jews, so why should we be? And there was a huge debate, and it was a really big debate in the early church, a really important one. And, and we mustn't just look at the fact that the Gentiles debating this were men and probably didn't want that to happen because it would be very uncomfortable. Um, I'm sure that didn't come into it at all, obviously. Um, but it, it was a huge debate. How do, we, how do we show when for centuries and centuries and centuries this was the way that young boys on the eighth day were circumcised into the religion of Judaism? And because Christianity grew out of Judaism, Jesus, as we know, was a Jewish, Jewish child. How how do we then show our ancestry? And so it was a great debate, but it was decided that of that of course this wasn't necessary. Outward signs of being a God's God's person is not necessary. What's important is inside, and um, um, and of course that's what we teach today. It's what's what's inside us, our soul, and what the Holy Spirit touches that's important um, for our Christian faith. But one thing that it does show um, very importantly at this time is that the decision that the, the apostles in Jerusalem, that um, P Paul and Barnabas, um, all of those working in the field, if you like, then came to the conclusion that all people are valid in God's name, that any person can worship God. But even more importantly, and that's when we come to that 
final part in our reading um, where it talks about but we should abstain from things polluted by idols and from fornication and whatever's been strangled and from blood. Um, well, yes, I mean, some of those things, I think, yes, definitely. Um, as a Christian, those things are, are things that we shouldn't um, take part in. But the food thing, well, actually, it wasn't because we're Christian that we should abstain from these things. But it was because at that time, their neighbour, these Christians, these new Christians, their neighbours were all Jewish. And it was to not offend. That was the reason that um, they shouldn't eat. Um, they should keep some of the food laws. Uh, it wasn't that we should do that because we're Christian, but we shouldn't offend our neighbours. Um, and it's the great start of living in harmony with everybody and recognising that every person is a human who is made in the image of God and that we are all equal in the eyes of God and that we should be kind to one another. And one of the ways those early Christians could be kind to their Jewish brothers and sisters was to show that they didn't completely poo-poo all their ideas, um, that they would keep some of the laws. And if you look around this churchyard now, these people long gone, we don't know what was in their hearts and souls. We don't know what the majority of those that Sally and I bury in this graveyard or bury their ashes, we've never met before. They don't come to church. But we commend them always to God. If you're buried in this churchyard, then you do have a very short, very short ceremony if you're not Christian or you didn't come to church. But we still commend them to God and say, God, this is one of your people. Please take them back to yourself. And we leave it to God. That's not me as a priest saying, this person is worthy. This is just saying, I'm commending this person. And this is what we do with all our neighbours, isn't it? Whether they're Christian or not. And the wonder of the parish system of churches in this country, that I have the cure of souls for everybody, not just you watching or you who come to church, but everybody. I have the cure of souls and the care for every person, as should every Christian. Shall we pray? Father God, who knows our needs before we ask, hear our prayers all people. We ask that you give grace to all who minister in your church, praying for your church around the world, especially in those places where it is difficult, dangerous even, to be a Christian. We pray for all those churches around the world who work so hard for the people in their communities, whether they are Christian or not particularly those places where food is scarce, where jobs are few, where life is difficult because of war or conflict or natural disaster. We pray, Lord, that you would anoint every person who ministers in your name with the Holy Spirit for their work in building up the body of Christ in your world. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We pray for our Queen and government, praying for our leaders and leaders of all nations. We pray for those places around the world that are suffering, praying for the west coast of America, for all those affected by the wildfires those who have lost homes and livelihoods and everything, those who have lost loved ones. Pray for all those places where there is war. And we pray that you would help leaders bring reconciliation to situations where there is deep and bitter conflict. And there would be an opportunity for every person to make the most of their lives. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray, Lord, that you would continue to bless the work of our local schools here in North Baddersley and in Ampfield. We pray for the work of the governors of those schools, for governors meeting this evening for Ampfield and Hursley, for teachers and staff. We pray for all our families and for the children in this difficult time. And despite all the problems that there are at the moment, that you would inspire teachers and give them the skill, enthusiasm and patience to inspire the young to learn. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray, Lord, that you are close to all those who are unwell, frail or suffering in any way. We pray for all those many on our prayer lists. For those we hold in our hearts and minds. And we pray for those around us who have no one else to pray for them. Bless all, Lord, who bring healing and care and who sustain hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we remember with thanksgiving those who have died. Surrounded by these many that are now in your care, we give thanks for those whom we have loved see no more, for those whose anniversary of death are around this time of year, for those whose funerals have taken place in the past week and will be coming in the following weeks. Lord, we ask that you strengthen all who grieve with comfort, faith and peace, for Jesus' sake. Amen. And so the collect for today, where we remember Hildegard, strong in faith, an encourager and a visionary. Most glorious and holy God, whose servant Hildegard strong in the faith, was caught up in the vision of your heavenly courts. By the breath of your spirit, open our eyes to glimpse your glory and our lips to sing your praises with all the angels. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. And so lifting our hearts and our prayers up to God, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, I hope you enjoy this weather while it lasts and I will see you um, not on Sunday as I will be away but next week somewhere for morning prayer. God bless you. Bye.